Would you like to have a resource to help you navigate all different aspects of retirement? Well, by the end of this video, you will gain clarity for your personal retirement plan and have action items to secure your retirement. To learn more about securing your retirement and all the different elements you need to know, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified when we post a video every Monday. We have helped hundreds of our clients gain clarity and get on the path to a comfortable and happy retirement. Now it's your turn. Let's dive in. Welcome to our wind down. We are so excited to have you with us this month. Uh, we um, are going to do something just a little bit different than we've done before. And the difference is going to be that we're going to present uh, some questions that we have answered that we want to answer that a lot of our clients are asking us right now. So Morgan is going to help us with the questions, but it's wind down. So we always start wind down with telling you about what we're actually having while we do this podcast. So Morgan. Let us know what we're drinking. Yep. Today, we're actually doing a Prosecco, the La Marca, which is pretty easily found in most grocery stores, but it's just light, summery, and a good way to kick off this wind down or, or any evening or celebration. It's a good one. Yeah, I know. It's uh, one of my wife Taylor's easily bottle of something to go to because it is just light and refreshing, and it mixes well with certain things. You can drink it by, by itself. You can make a cocktail, make a mimosa. So uh, just a nice, easy drink to usually keep in the fridge. Uh, at all times. So basically what happens uh, in our uh, office is that somebody will call us up and they'll say, Hey, can I talk to Mersh or can I talk to Raiden? I got this question. And when we get those a lot, we kind of say, Oh, this is must be a common question. Uh, we've done some podcast uh, on similar topics, but we thought, Hey, we're midway through the year for the most part. Why not just go through and and, uh, and see what we've got going on that we might be able to answer. And this might be a question you've got as well in your life. So Morgan, can you do this for us? Can you just tell us all five questions and then we'll come back and, and, we'll, and we'll hit the first one. Just repeat that for us on the first one. Sure. So the first one is what should we be doing to prepare for inflation? What can we do to be proactive when planning for taxes? Should we consider a Roth? Should I keep my life insurance in retirement? And finally, are RMDs going to be required in 2021? So going back to number one, so we can touch on that one, what should we be doing to prepare for inflation? I'll let Merce take this one in the beginning. So <clears throat> we know that inflation has been a very hot topic over the past couple months. Uh, we know what the government did last year uh, to keep us all afloat during the pandemic. And ultimately, that's going to have some repercussions. We don't know what those repercussions are, but inflation has been one of the one of the quick answers is that, yes, with all the printing of money that is going to happen or that has been happening over the past almost full year, that inflation is going to creep up, up on us. And we're already seeing it in certain things. You know, food, the cost of food is going up. The cost of gas has gone up uh, here recently. Uh, the cost of construction has gone up. So materials and everything like that. And so what can we be doing to prepare? Well, um, I think you uh, for one reason, for one thing, I don't don't think you can overly stress about what inflation is going to do. Yes, it's 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 a fact of life. It's always there. Over the last ten years, it's been a little bit over one and a half percent. Over the last one hundred years, it's been over three percent. And there's some massive years in there where it was fifteen to twenty percent of inflation. So inflation is going to ebb and flow. Um, I think everyone is somewhat seeing this as more of a short-term inflationary thing to get the economy back into a normal stint, um, but. Raiden, what are your thoughts as far as being able to prepare? What can we do there? Well, I think one thing that's a little bit different about our approach, and I'll just say this, and whether you work with the Merce and I or not, and maybe you're just listening, is I think you've got to really look at the fact that certain types of investments do good in an inflationary type environment. So if you had that idea that you're going to be in a buy and hold and you're just going to hold those assets no matter what, well, then you're going to have assets that are going to suffer because of inflation, the same as you would have assets that don't do great if inflation is very low. So I think being able to have some kind of flexibility in your investment plan and what the way we would do that in our scenario is we actually will shift those assets automatically if we start to see certain places making more money. And that's going to happen as we get into an inflationary type scenario. Now, I want to go back to one thing Merce said. Uh, we, we, in all of our retirement financial plans, we plan for inflation and on almost every single plan, we plan for what we have seen to be the hundred year average, not the last 10. 
Now, if you were to look at all those years, and we have a, a list of every bit of inflation year by year, all the way back for the last 100 years, like Merce said, there were periods in there where you might have a year that was a 15% inflation. And then we had periods that was negative, meaning we, we, were, we were going backwards, meaning things were going down in price, not up. Um, when we have big market corrections, that's what happens sometimes. We saw that in 08, saw it during the Great Depression. You're going to have a deflation, not inflation. So it balances out. Um, you're typically not going to have a run on inflation. But if we were to have that, we would just need to adjust the overall um, investment plan. So here, big story short, plan for inflation, plan a little bit higher than what's been the last 10 year norm. And then make sure you've got an investment strategy that allows you to be flexible, whether that's you're working with somebody like uh, Merce and I, or you're doing it yourself. All right, we're ready for the second question. All right, another common question is, what can we do to be proactive when planning for taxes? So I'll, I'll start this one off. I think <clears throat> taxes, you know, another hot topic in the story with the change of administration, the potential threat of taxes going up, we knew they were gonna go up at some point. So now it's, well, how do we navigate them? And I, it, it's really going to come back to the moral of the story for the first question, which is, you know, have a plan in place that can be somewhat uh, flexible and maneuverable. If you're newer into retirement or you're, you're almost to retirement, uh, you've probably already kind of gone through some exercises as to, well, or, and, and you definitely should if you have not, as to what types of accounts do you have and what types of uh, tax ramifications do those accounts have with them? So for example, a pre-tax IRA, well, it's pre-tax. You haven't paid any tax dollars on that yet. So you have to build that into your plan that maybe you've got a hundred thousand in there. Maybe you've got a million in there. Well, that's not all your money. Some of that you made a deal with the government that you're going to be paying uncle, uncle Sam down the road. And so you got to remember that with the Roth accounts, if you have those, that's beautiful because they are tax-free. And there's other buckets of money out there that are taxed differently. So that's just the account side. Then there's also things you got to think through when it comes to social security. Are you, are you earning income to where your social security is going to be taxed at a higher level? Medicare, when you're turning 65, there's tax ramifications there if you make too much. And so ultimately it comes down to planning out how this is all going to play out. And for us, what we're huge proponents of is that retirement financial plan that kind of that is the foundation. We say it's the foundation of every decision that we're making, and it helps us think through the next 20, 30, 40 years of your life. Well, I think that answered pretty good. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm ready for you to move on there. I'm going to have a sip of champagne. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> All right. The next one is, should we consider a Roth? So I think this one actually ties into question number two as well, because it's really thinking about this idea of taxes. And uh, so, uh, by the way, the Roth conversion question is an extremely common question for us in our practice. One of the things that we do is we actually have software that actually helps us to think through what a Roth makes sense. It also, in addition, going back to question two, helps us to be proactive when planning for taxes. So we find that there's a lot of things to consider with a Roth, not just the tax perspective. We have to think about, is it gonna make my Medicare insurance go up? We, uh, which it, it can do uh, if my income is too high in a year, um, but is it gonna uh, trigger other problems within my tax return? So we wanna make sure that we're looking at the whole picture. I would tell you though, if you retired and you're not 72 and you've got a lower income right now, um, a Roth is probably a really good thing to consider for some amount of money. We have many clients that we do Roth conversions and the tax ramifications are extremely low. So I think that that is something that we really wanna make sure that we uh, consider. Uh, so to answer the question, should we consider a Roth? 100% consider it. That does not mean do it, I, but yes, it needs to be in your plan Every single year, you need to look at it because it might be that you can, can, can do the Roth conversion without actually having to pay very much tax. Yeah, I think that's great. I don't have anything to add on that one either. So good okay. job. Question number four, should I keep my life insurance in retirement? So I, I'll go back to for life insurance and a lot of things, you know, Raiden taught me way back when I started working with him is. You all, I, I, he, we believe that everything should come back to the why. Why did we do this or why did we do that? If, if you know the why, then you can, you can understand it conceptually in your mind. 
Well, if you go back to why you would ever buy life insurance in the first place, I think it comes down to a couple different things. One is you're younger and maybe you have a family and you have some liabilities that if something was to happen to you, you want those to be covered through life insurance. Well, eventually that why starts to change. And we see clients all the time that have plenty of life insurance, but their house is paid off. The kids are out of college. The kids are taking care of themselves and there really are no other liabilities out there. And, but they're still paying these premiums every single year that can essentially just get annoying. And so sometimes the, the question is, well, I don't, I don't need this anymore. Do I need to keep it? And so going back to the why, sometimes the, there ends up being a client that has a goal. And this is becoming more and more common as we see the potential of tax rates going up that I would like to leave a certain amount of money behind, whether that's 100,000, 500,000, a million dollars behind to my heirs. And the question becomes, what is the best way to do that from a tax perspective to them? Well, life insurance proceeds are tax-free. So that is almost always the best money to leave behind. And that, if that's your why, the why is leaving money behind at a tax proactive way, well, then maybe it does make sense to still keep that life insurance in play or consider buying more life insurance. So ultimately, it really comes down to having a conversation, in my opinion, as to what the why is. Yeah. And I just want to uh, reiterate, or at least talk a little bit about the fact that well, a, lot of, a lot of folks do not know that you can actually put money into a life insurance policy and it grow on a tax deferred and also a uh, tax advantage way that you can actually get the money back out. Now with life insurance, in order to be able to use a vehicle like that, you do have to go through underwriting, which means you cannot, you have to have, you cannot have the worst of health, but you don't have to have the best of health either. Um, so things like high blood pressure or cholesterol, those kinds of things are not going to prevent you from looking at a life insurance policy. But we have many people, and I think many people should look at life insurance for holding cash value uh, because there's a lot of benefits. One, it's a great alternative to cash in the bank. Number two, if you don't ever use the money, it goes to the next generation, just like Merce just said, 100% tax-free. And so that is just a huge advantage. So I do believe that there are opportunities to have life insurance in retirement. And it's not so much that you're saying I need life insurance because I'm going to leave somebody with debt, but much more about wealth, wealth transfer or safe cash alternatives. So again, I think it's just a question you do want to consider and talk about with your financial planner. All right. And finally, are RMDs going to be required in 2021? So okay, first of all, Merce, if you start, that's okay. Can you make sure we define what RMD is? Yeah, that, that I was going to do that. I, and Morgan, thank you for saving the, the easiest one for last, because I think there's a quick answer here. But before we give you the quick answer, you might want to understand what an RMD is, which is a, a required minimum distribution. And it's on your qualified accounts, more, more commonly known as your 401k and your IRA type assets. Um, essentially, I said it earlier, you made a deal with the government that said, I'm going to get a tax break for putting money into these buckets. But at some point, I have to pay the taxes on this money. And the government came out and said that, well, that age is going to be 70 and a half. And so at age 70 and a half, you're required to start taking money out. Well, last year in 2020, there's this thing that came out called the SECURE Act, and they pushed it to age 72. So anyone that is not 72 yet, your RMD age is age 72, which means it comes down to a, a formula that the IRS has come up with that says, um, here's how much you need to take out based off of your total IRA assets. And once again, that is fully taxable money. So something to consider as to what your RMD uh, fallout is going to be every single year. Um, but the short answer to the question, is it going to be required in 2021? Yes. The answer is yes. Last year, it was waived because of the pandemic, because people were hurting all over the place from a job perspective, from an income flow perspective. The government says, you know what, we'll give you a break this year and not require any RMDs in 2020. We were wondering about that this year. We like to think we're pretty important people, but we don't have an ear as to what's going on inside the government. I don't think anyone does. And so we cannot say that it will be waived very likely. It, I mean, my answer is yes, it is, it is there. So plan on it, make sure you take it by the end of the year. Otherwise there, there are uh, penalties in place if you don't take it by the end of the year. All right, well, we have gone through what we've considered to be kind of our top five questions that people have. Uh, been asking us this year. So we hope this has been a little bit helpful. We always encourage you, if you've not had a chance, go visit our website, pomwealth.net. 
I always encourage people to go to the blog page because we have a new article that comes out every single week around topics to help you make sure that you have a good, secure retirement and peace of mind. So check that out. And at the top of that page, you can see a place that if you need to have a conversation, would like to have a conversation with Merce and I, you can schedule it right there on the website. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. We hope this video has given you some confidence and clarity as you plan for a worry-free life in retirement. But what else do you need? We have created a complimentary video course called Three Keys to Secure Your Retirement. This video walks you through step-by-step -step what you need to do to get ready for retirement. You can also check out our podcast called Secure Your Retirement. You can subscribe below. For more retirement tips, watch this video. Create your retirement income plan. Also, click here to subscribe to our podcast, Secure Your Retirement. If you like this video, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends.